Well, the holidays were fun. I... Mm. Ah. Mm. Sorry, I just had something in my throat. Oh, I feel so much better now. All right, well, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, right. I'm depressed. I am personally a fervent fan of the features of flags and frequently fly my favorites with fanfare on the walls of my apartment, but alas, being a Pennsylvanian, every time I want to fly my own state's flag, I am met with this abomination. Not only does this flag come prepackaged with half the horsemen of the apocalypse, it also has this very nice blue background, which is very fitting because that's exactly how I feel every time I look at this visual war crime. But it gets even worse when you look at the states that border Pennsylvania. Maryland, Ohio, and Delaware all have better flags than Pennsylvania. Let me repeat, there are states out there that do something worse than Delaware, which is frankly horrifying. Uh, I wish some of these states could at least tear a leaf out of the books of the states that already know what they're doing with their flags, like Arizona, Alaska, D.C., Hawaii, Tennessee. Wait a minute. Why is there a Union Jack at the top corner of the flag of Hawaii? What does Hawaii have to do with Britain? And that is what I'm going to tell you today. Now, you might expect me to say something to the effect of, Oh, it's because the British actually colonized Hawaii before the US ever got to them. Oh, remember to like and subscribe if you ever want me to cite sources. Firstly, that was hurtful. Secondly, the British never actually colonized Hawaii, unless you're willing to discount that one part where a British officer took control of the entire archipelago because apparently putting your palace on the seaside sounds like a really nice idea until you start to think about it. Well, nevertheless, the Brits are obviously going to be involved eventually, so we're going to start the story all the way back to the first interactions between the native Hawaiians and the British Navy, which at this point was under the command of Captain James Cook, who, if you don't know him, was the inventor of Australia. I once had the unique opportunity to interview an Aboriginal community, and immediately I had asked them how it felt to be completely artificial alongside their friends, family, and supposed history. I was shortly thereafter asked to leave the Denny, so I'm still assuming it's rather a touchy subject to- God damn it, this joke sucks. Luckily for Cook, when he first arrived on the islands, the native Hawaiians thought he was a deity by the name of Lono, who got drunk one night, started punching everyone he came across, and then sailed out to sea. Which sounds a lot like something an Australian would do, so I can definitely see why there'd be confusion. Furthermore, it was prophesied that Lono would make his return on, quote, a strange canoe, and I don't know if you've ever seen a British warship before, but that feels like a very fitting description. Sadly, the good relations were not to last, as Captain Cook, who was, after all, from Britain, did not speak any Hawaiian, nor did he understand any Hawaiian customs, leading him to break faux pas after faux pas, despite supposedly being a god. Oh, Brits and their cringe humor, when will that numbskull learn? Well, he wouldn't, because he would later get killed and disemboweled on that very same island, but we're not interested in Captain Cook right now. We're more interested in this guy here, Kamehameha, and yes, before you ask, he is in fact the origin behind the Dragon Ball Z thing, which is fitting because, just like Goku, he is a complete Mary Sue. It's my personal belief that the shadowy organizations that control over governments were having a Take Your Daughter to Work Day on the day that they were writing the history of the Polynesian Islands, and this is what one of their daughters suggested. Now, is this likely? Absolutely not, but it is still more probable than Kamehameha being an actual human being. Where was I again? Ah, right. While Cook was still docked at Hawaii, he invited some of the native Hawaiians on board for, I don't know, sleepovers. One of these Hawaiians just so happened to be Kamehameha, who developed a keen interest in Western technology. And as it turns out, having guns and a really good navy are very, very important when conducting warfare. So while Kamehameha was busy conquering Hawaii, the island, not the archipelago, he was trying to get on good terms with the British, which was all well and good because one of the British officers who had served under Cook on the day he got, well, you know, was busy trying to establish good relations with the Hawaiians as well. Also, his name was George Vancouver. Guess where he's been. It was in fact on one of the diplomatic missions being led by Vancouver that Kamehameha got his first flag. Probably from a conversation that went something like, Hey, 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 Kamehameha, how's it going? Love what you did with the place here, man. It's looking really nice and, uh, and, uh, uh rich. Uh, look, look, I, I just wanted to apologize for the last time we came here. I, I know things got off to a bit of a rocky start, but, uh, hey, hey, hey I have a makeup gift for you. Uh, here it is. This is a Union Jack, uh, very common in the country I, uh, come from. It's actually kind of funny. I, I, I like collecting these things and, uh, putting them up in my room. They're, they're really nice to look at. Oh, uh, okay, you can have it. That's, that, that's cool. Hey, you, you have to admit, though, there were a lot of funny moments when we, uh, last came here as well. Remember when Captain Cook got so drunk he started vomiting his guts at... Uh, bad choice of words. Kamehameha was actually very fond of the flag and even flew it in front of his house, making it the sort of first flag of Hawaii, although unofficial. Well, sometime later, the year was finally 1812, where Kamehameha had finally united the Hawaiian Islands and the US and Britain started that war they both think they won somehow. Now, shockingly, Hawaii had very little interest in partaking in this Anglo-American conflict on the other end of the world. Unfortunately for them, an American privateer who had docked on Hawaii had noticed that they were flying the Union Jack and immediately demanded audience with the king. Hey, uh, why are you flying the British flag? You're not allied, are you? Oh, no, 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 we're neutral, we're just friends with the British. Oh, if that's the case, could you hang the American flag then? I love looking at the stars and bars. Isn't that the name of the flag of the Confederacy, though? The what? So, to maintain neutrality, Kamehameha started flying the American flag, and sure enough, soon thereafter... Oi! The fuck you flying there, you bloody tosser? 
Kamehameha now knew that if he wanted to remain neutral, he would have to design his own flag for Hawaii that couldn't be misconstrued for any of the other nations nearby. This was especially of importance because he wanted to conduct a series of trade missions to China where he could sell a bunch of Hawaii's wood. Unfortunately, we weren't entirely sure how the flag came about because Hawaii didn't have a written language at the time, but most people assumed that they wanted to appease both the Americans and the British, so they created a flag that was a portmanteau of both of them. What finally resulted was a flag with the Union Jack in the top corner accompanied by a bunch of red, white, and blue stripes, although the exact number and order of these stripes were in a constant state of flux until they were finally finalized to what we have today, with eight stripes representing the eight major islands of Hawaii. And so, with the safety of his merchants now secure, Kamehameha sent out a bunch of ships to do trade in the Chinese port city of Macau, at which point they were immediately stopped because they couldn't recognize the flag. And that's why Hawaii has the flag it does today. So the moral of the story is, God damn it, Pennsylvania, fix your fucking flag! Oh, also, footnote, we have this flag right here, the Kanaka Mali, first presented by Gene Simeona in 2001. Remember this guy from before? Well, when he took over Hawaii for five months, he had raised his own flags and raised all the others. Simeona argues that this was one of the flags that was burned down, hence why we don't see much of it nowadays. Proponents of this flag praise its lack of European influence on it and tout it as the true native Hawaiian flag. On the flip side, critics argue that there's little historical backing behind the flag's, well, history, and thus refuse to fly it. Okay, bye.